Gregor Schneider is a very different artist. He's German and based in Germany. He wasn't attracted to move to America or to England, but happy to stay not only in Germany, but in his area, in his little town. His art, again, is very different. He transforms buildings. I saw a project of his, which Art Angel did in London, in two exactly similar row houses in the east end of London. And you walk in and the woman is washing up and the man is having a shower. A third one is in the bedroom, but only his legs are sticking out from under the bed. They were very old-fashioned workers' cottages. Tried to talk to the woman, didn't get a response. Looked around, said, okay. I went to the other house, two doors down, absolutely identical. The same furniture, the same woman, clad in black, washing up. Same guy in the shower, having fun, and the same legs sticking out from under the bed. And I said, what is going on? This is really spooky. Is there an underground where they can quickly run across? So I did what you're not supposed to do, because after seeing the second house, you're supposed to go back to an office down the road and hand back the keys. I quickly went back to the original house and saw if they were there, and they were there. It's very unsettling. It was one of the best projects I have seen. I knew the people at Art Angel, and I congratulated them and said, what's going on? And well, they were twins, identical twins. And they had recruited a number of identical women and identical men who were trained to do this performance. It was a huge success in London, one of Art Angel's best projects. So it, let me talk to this artist. And I was told he's very difficult. Okay, I've dealt with difficult artists before. I met him in Venice at the Venice Biennale and found him very friendly, very good looking, blonde, blue eyed young man. And I said, would you like to come to Australia? He said, I would love to. And I said, well, what would you like to do? Have you got any ideas? Yes, I know exactly what I want to do. I don't want to come to a site visit. Just find me a beach. I actually went to look at the beach at Little Bay. And when I saw those cliffs that Christo and Jean-Claude wrapped, I thought to myself, you must have been out of your mind to undertake that. They were huge. But that wouldn't have really worked, the beach there, too small and not that easily accessible. So I thought, well, why not try Bondi Beach? I knew the people who were running sculpture by the sea, and I thought, why not approach them to see if somehow we can do something jointly? But they threw up all sorts of difficulties. You can't touch the beach. Uh, you'll never get permission. They didn't want to get involved. So that gave me even more determination to try and get it. And through the council, I had to work through the police, the local police, big, big meetings. But by then, we had a number of projects, successful projects under our belt. We were a non-for-profit organization with very reputable board, etc. So eventually we got permission for a three-week period in September to do the work there. What Gregor wanted to do is to construct a number of cells which were like a labyrinth. They had doors, but not everyone would open. So you really had to find your way 
around. He had very much in mind the detention centers, the cells migrants were locked in. But each cell was furnished the same way. It had a beach umbrella, a lilo, and a rubbish bag, a closed rubbish bag. Why a rubbish bag? But that's how he wanted it. And in the end, we settled on 21 interconnected cells. He wanted it originally to reach into the water, but that was, from every point of view, safety, very difficult. We erected it close to the walkway, and the only objections we had, quite vocal, were the sand runners whose paths we blocked for a few weeks. So the cells were very easy to erect because they were just standard construction fencing that were bolted together. And what he wanted in the cells was relatively easy to get. One of my favorite projects is when nobody was there, it looked like a beautiful minimal sculpture. And when people came, it became almost like an unscripted performance piece. Now, Gregor was really surprised how people were happy to settle in to those cages, boxes. He thought that people would be frightened, would be put off by going in there. But the Bondi beachgoers, it was a gift to them. The families used to leave their towels, lunches, surfboards, everything. They were from young to grandparents. It was, at the weekends, literally packed each cell. One of the funniest incidents, while I was watching, a tall, bearded young man came along on roller skates. And he said to me, what's this shit, mate? And I said, this shit is an artwork. He said, no, it's not. I'm an artist. I know what art is. And I said to him, I'm very sorry. I didn't know you were an artist. You must be right. And he skated off. So actually, I wanted to call our 50th exhibition, What's This Shit, Mate? But the art gallery thought, mm, it's not a good title. But uh, it remains very much part of our history. What's the shit made? A very interesting footnote is that two years later in Herzliya, which is a town not far from Tel Aviv, they have a very nice small museum of contemporary art. And Gregor had a retrospective in the museum. And the museum director asked me, do we still have the uh, frameworks? And because we rarely throw anything away, I said, yes, we do. Would I mind shipping it to them? And I said, well, I'm happy to ship it to them, but I don't want it back. So we agreed on that. And on a beach, not as nice as Bondi, but a beach on the Mediterranean with beautiful sand, was erected exactly the same as in Bondi in Sydney. On the way to Europe, my wife and I stopped to have a look at it, and there was nobody inside. Really interesting. It was exactly the same. And I asked people, I mean, they didn't know who I was, why don't you go in? It's quite fun in there. He said, no, we, we don't like cages. We don't, it's too, it's too scary, reminds us. No, nobody went in. So that's a real insight into how different people, different sensibilities react to the same thing. Gregor keeps being a very controversial artist. He wanted to create a large black cube resembling the Kaaba in the middle of St. Mark's Square for a Venice Biennale. Of course, he didn't get permission. 
Eventually, he got his kabak in Berlin with the cooperation of the Muslim population of Berlin. But he keeps pushing the boundaries and we keep in touch. And I think he's very different, but a very great artist.